Welcome to the official Red Armand Gang Beginner to Intermediate PvP Guide. This guide will cover the basics of positioning, spawns, map layout, gear, you know, like grenades, ammo, armor, etc. Like just basic PvP tips. There will be timestamps in the description uh, and along the bottom bar or whatever you may call it. Um, there will be chapters as YouTube calls them. Start with gear. The most cost efficient gear is the 6B3TM level 4 full body armored rig from Ragman level 2, just 50k, and it's amazing for early wipe or just like extremely budget players, right? This rig will save you from KS23s, and any high tier ammo is going to go through like slick or kill armor anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This is all you need for PvP. Ideally, you're moving your body in such a way where you're not getting shot to the point where like your armor will save you right like the whole point of the armor is if you do get shot it has a chance to save you right like you're not supposed to rely on the armor to like just eat bullets for you same with helmets um the killer armor the class 5 full body is uh very nice it has very good turn speed uh the rig from jaeger the new rig is uh really good for slots for the cheap price as well on the marketplace it's like maybe 20k it might go up after this video who knows um the best headsets in my opinion are the gssh and the new ones from skier i think they're called the m32 um they have no trader limit and they sound really nice but it's all preference whatever works for you so typically the guns that you want to be using um if you're under at level 40 is the val or vss doesn't really matter with spp um those are like it's really dirt cheap you know it costs like virtually nothing and it hits like a truck but you have to be like up in somebody's face to to like actually spray them you know vector is a. Uh... 308 MDR can load M61, and it's probably the best gun in the game because of its versatility. A basic compensator or suppressor can do wonders for the gun's performance. Once you have max traders, the HK is obviously the gangsta certified rifle of the Red Armband Gang. The HK is a 5.56 laser, but since you know the servers in Tarkov are not the best, uh, you can get some really high hit count games and just have like bullets just phase through people sometimes. So 556 is most definitely inconsistent. I definitely would recommend 995 for labs um, because people like to wear Reese helmet and Alton um, and it goes through slicks relatively easily. But 55A1 will work and is definitely viable, especially on other maps. M4A1 is basically the HK, but it has slower fire rate, which actually is a lot more important than you would think. Like it's pretty much the make or break. It's the reason why the HK is just for sure better. Um, but there's more ergonomics on the M4, so you can run 6 year unders and whip it up extremely quickly. Um, but ergonomics as a whole isn't r really too important. Now, the SA-58. <laughs> the SA is a chimp brain W key weapon, you know. Uh, you basically use it like an SMG. It's kind of similar to the VAL, but like a real gun. Like, um, it shoots M61, it has low ergo, and like, mediocre recoil, but hey, you know, it spits M61. Do not use M80, you weirdo. Grenades. All grenades in Tarkov are slightly different and have different uses. Grenades in AFT love to make no noise when they roll or make no sound at all. So definitely be careful and be, like, attentive. You know, you're going to have to pay attention and try and, like, expect grenades even if they don't make sound. Fog 25 is basically like an impact nade. They have two-second fuse time and, like, small radius with low fragments and damage. Uh, but you can use them to, like, throw them directly on people if they're sitting in, like, corners that you can get a nade into. Um... And they'll force people to move. And I mean, eh, they, they work good enough, but they are relatively expensive. Fog 17 is like the 25, but explodes in three seconds. Um, but it has a lot more fragments and damage. So if you can sink those around corners or like on people, uh, probably, the, probably the best nade, just like direct impact nade. RGD is a very average grenade. Three and a half fuse time, decent damage and fragmentation. The F1 grenade is basically the RGD with less damage, but they roll left, so you can, like, throw them around corners, kind of. The M67 is a lightweight grenade with a 5-second fuse time, perfect for throwing at your feet and running at people. They can be thrown way further and feel different than the other nades when thrown, so be wary of that. Positioning. You need to be aware of your position on the map and where to expect other players to be. Typically, you can expect people's general pathing based off spawns, but we'll go into detail later in the video. Before you enter raid, decide what your goal is. When you enter raid, you should be doing something. Push for loot, you know, PMC kills, questing, etc, right? Otherwise, what is the point? Like, jacket looting sim? 
Get a grip, you boss. Start of the raid, typically, when you spawn in, your goal should be to check the closest spawns to you. If you have a goal besides PMC kills, obviously focus on that and keep in mind potential player pathing from the closest spawns. Towards the middle of the raid, you have to be aware of where you are in the map and the angles people can be peeking you from. I personally am taking this into consideration as I sprint around the map. In the back of my mind, I'm accounting for all the events that have happened in that raid and rotate through the map accordingly. Towards the end of the raid, basically, I just W key the extract and just hope I don't get ratted. You know? I mean, you can clear the common spots with nades and your eyeballs, but that's because, you know, yeah, imagine, right? Spawns. There will be a link to all the spawns on all the maps in the description of this video. The spawns on EFT are poorly designed and frequently on maps like Interchange and Reserve, you'll be able to see people spawn in. It is extremely important to learn the spawns from all maps. If you are new to the game, I recommend learning Reserve. Rotations and expecting people is one of the most important parts to increase your survivability in raid. Pushing people directly is typically not a good idea. Take flanks and try and outsmart your opponent. The game is not taking repeated aim duels until someone dies. It is about trying to outplay your enemy with movement and rotations. You have to be aware and think, where is my enemy? How do I get an angle on him without them realizing? This does not mean crab in a corner for 10 minutes hoping they walk by. For newer players, this is um, probably the hardest part, um, is mindset. People are more scared of you than you are scared of them. Typically, you know, new players will hear a sound and hold an angle and just gamble whether the person that they hear didn't hear them or, you know, and just wait very patient. Um, this isn't good. Like you won't improve as a player if you do this because like you're just gambling. It's literally just gambling. In this game, you will die a lot. It is nature of the game and should be entirely expected. So much RNG to account for and Harkovism. So, you know, life goes on. Try and learn from your deaths the best you can. Using weapons like the KS-23 and the v and the GL-40 are just a crush. And you will not get better if you rely on these weapons for kills. But I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt here or there, right? Uh, last but not least, peeking. Sprinting past the door, you know, while alt-looking it, like holding down middle mouse and like running past it, is a very effective way of getting information on a room or like a space. You can like run past a hallway or, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And Alt-E or Q is like a sidestep. Um, it's not useful if the server is like lagging because it takes a long time for your character to like unpeak. But if the server is like not lagging, then um, it's very quick peak. Um, but I don't know, use at your own risk. Just typically doing a strafe um, with your, you know, movement keys is a lot better than an alt E peak. Um, but they're very strong in certain situations. So use your best judgment. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to check out my Twitch channel and all the other social links will be in the description. I'm very active on all social media, especially the Discord. Also check out the Discord. If you liked the video or it helped you in any way, make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment telling me what I did right or wrong or any opinions you know you have. Make sure to leave them on the video. Really appreciate it, guys. Much love. Thank you for being here. Uh, have a good day.